Hi everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. And it's been a little while since I've done an update on my California King Snake Rex. So today I'm going to do that and go over some care for the California King Snake. California King Snakes are known to be very docile snakes and make a good pet and a good choice for someone who is a beginner or getting their very first snake. And the California king snake is available in a number of different morphs with different colors and patterns, but what most people associate with this snake is the wild type, which is familiar for its black and white bands and its oval shaped head and its shiny scales. And when I first got Rex, he was just an eight week old hatchling and no bigger than the size of a pencil. And a year later, he's still somewhat of a baby, but he's grown quite a bit. And he is doing really well. He sheds really well, he eats well, and is just overall a very happy and healthy snake. So the care for the California king snake is very similar to the care of many other North American colubrid snakes. And really the only thing I do differently for him from say my corn snake or my garter snakes is that I keep a majority of his enclosure more arid. So we can start with enclosure size. King snakes on average grow to a length of three to five feet, but can possibly reach lengths of six feet. The old rule of thumb is that an enclosure length and width added together should be at least as long as the length of the snake. But keepers today seem to be in agreement that the length of the enclosure alone should be the same as the length of the snake. And I think that's a good practice. Whenever you can do it, bigger is always better. Right now, I'm keeping Rex in a 20 gallon enclosure, which was a little big for him several months ago, but is a perfect size for him now. It's not the prettiest enclosure in my reptile room, but I'm gonna be upgrading him into something larger at some point in the future. And at that point, I'm gonna make him something beautiful and something that mimics more the natural environment that he comes from. I keep Rex in the same way that I keep most other snakes where there is bioactive substrate, but no plants or drainage layer. As far as substrate goes, you have some choices. But king snakes really like to burrow, so you need to keep that in mind. California king snakes are a semi-arid species, so you need to keep the majority of the enclosure more dry. You could use something like aspen shavings, which hold tunnels and burrows very well. But if you use aspen, you'll need to completely replace the substrate every month or two. Plus, if you use aspen, you'll need to provide a humid hide filled with damp sphagnum moss to give your snake access to a more humid microclimate in order to keep him healthy and facilitate shedding. Another option is an arid bioactive substrate. For this, I use the same ABG mix as I do with all of my enclosures, but mix in some play sand. This is the same substrate that I use for my leopard gecko as well. So Rex's enclosure is bioactive and there's a healthy population of springtails, isopods, and beetles for the cleanup crew. I keep everything mostly dry, but occasionally overflow his water bowl in one corner. And this provides Rex with a humidity gradient and provides a little bit of moisture for the cleanup crew. As far as lighting goes, you need to provide a day-night cycle like you would for any reptile, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. 
Snakes don't absolutely need UVB light to survive, but it has benefits. So if you can provide UVB light, that's a good thing. And if you do have plants, you'll need to have a full spectrum LEDs to keep the plants healthy. But as much as king snakes like to burrow, good luck with the plants. Heating for your California king snake is similar to what you would provide many other colubrid snakes. They need a heat gradient to control their body temperature with a warm side at 85 to 90 degrees and a cool side at 75 to 80 degrees. There are a number of ways you can do this. You can use heat mats or heat tape with a thermostat or different types of heat bulbs like ceramic heat emitters, halogen or fluorescent bulbs, or deep heat projectors. I've recently moved away from using heat mats and have switched all of my snakes to deep heat projectors. I don't have time in this video to go over all the scientific reasons why deep heat projectors are good for your snake, but basically they provide more UVA light, which penetrates more deeply into your snake's skin and muscle tissue, rather than just surface heat. However you decide to heat your snake, you'll want to purchase an infrared temperature gun and use that to monitor the temperature at different locations in the enclosure. More so than many other snakes, king snakes can have a varied diet, and they're known for being excellent eaters with a powerful food response. Except for when he's in shed, Rex has never turned down food. King snakes are famous for eating other snakes, including rattlesnakes, and are actually immune to rattlesnake venom. In the wild, though, they eat almost anything they can find, from rodents to small lizards, frogs, birds, and even fish. I feed Rex a staple diet of frozen thawed mice. He's recently switched from pinkies to fuzzies, but I occasionally vary his diet with some frozen tilapia fish, and he's even eaten earthworms when I've offered them. Baby king snakes can be fed a little more often every five to seven days, while adults can be fed every seven to 10 days. For decor in the enclosure, you'll need at least one hide on the warm side and one hide on the cool side. You'll also need a water bowl that you keep filled with fresh clean water at all times. And as with any snake, the more clutter and enrichment items you give them, the happier they'll be. Rocks, limbs, caves, anything they can explore and climb on or through will stimulate them mentally as well as provide them with more opportunities for exercise. And as far as handling and socialization goes, too much handling can cause a snake stress. But some gentle handling a couple times a week will help your snake to get used to being handled and not be afraid of you when you do go to handle it. For a snake that does have such a strong food response, being well socialized will help to avoid accidental feeding bites. But you need to learn some tricks to make sure that your snake knows the difference between feeding time and handling time. Rex is still a young snake and he's still a little bit shy and skittish. Once I have him out of his enclosure and in my hands for a few minutes, he calms right down, but he doesn't like being picked up. He's still a very squirmy and skittish snake about that and usually musks on me. Plus, a lot of the time it's hard to get him out of his enclosure because he's completely burrowed into the substrate. 
But my corn snake pumpkin was exactly the same way when he was this age. And he outgrew that as he became an adult. So I still have to work on getting Rex more socialized. But for now, I'm taking my time with him and letting that process unfold slowly. And I'm sure as he grows into a more confident adult, he'll get there. So that about covers it for the care of the California king snake. And whether you have a king snake and you're doing research on how to improve your husbandry or you're thinking about getting a king snake, then I hope you found this useful. And if you did, do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel. And if I left anything out or you have any questions at all, I'd love to hear from you. So just leave me a comment in the comment sections below. And I'll see you in the next video.